planning session this fall. The Atlantic Institute on Aging is closed. The government has cancelled the one position it was funding. Our Catherine Harrop takes a look at the former program and the void its loss leaves behind. From personalized music on iPods to replace sleeping medication to university students listening to stories of aging from seniors. The Atlantic Institute on Aging was behind these initiatives. The Institute was the only one of its kind when it started eight years ago and it became a hub of information on the latest research, innovations and philosophies on aging. It was run by a board of volunteers and one paid person, Barb Burnett. She was a conduit from the Department of Social Services. Recently, however, the government decided to stop funding that position. Burnett decided to retire rather than return to the department. I'm disappointed. I, I believe that the Atlantic Institute on Aging played a big role in identifying innovation and, and bringing together partnerships that hadn't existed before. Social development critic MLA Ernie Steves says he doesn't see the sense behind pulling back any resources in this field. We need to concentrate more on, on developing program services, amalgamating programs and services, finding out what the seniors need. We don't need to be cutting back on that. If I were to have a concern and a continued passion, it's about the voice of those people who are aging. Because I think as public servants and as people in the system, we create policy, we create systems for them. Um, and I'm not sure that, that we always get it right. The Department of Social Development replied to our interview with an email saying that Burnett's work and the Institute's work was appreciated, but that now there is a new plan to continue the work the Institute started. Catherine Harrop, CBC News, Fredericton.